Test me, O God, and know my thoughts. See that my path is not wicked, and lead me in the way everlasting. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to our Thursday Mass as we journey through this season of Lent. Today we also have a commemoration, the commemoration of Saint Casimir. Casimir was a Polish-Lithuanian prince who lived in the 15th century. Whilst initially it looked like his career was to be set on that path of royalty and ruling and governing, Casimir himself chose a different path. He chose the path of prayer, of piety, and especially of charity. Sadly, his life was short. He died at the age of 26, though by then he'd already established a great reputation for holiness. It's said that quite often they would find him kneeling outside the gates of the church early in the morning, waiting for it to be opened so that he could spend his day in prayer. He's also remembered, as I say, for charity, for love of the poor. There's a famous picture of St Casimir, known as the three-handed Casimir. You can see how his right hand seems to have been reduplicated. Now, some say that, that was just an accident of the paint. The painter changed his mind, but his first effort, as it were, came back through. But some people say it's a reference to Casimir's generosity. Open-handed he gives to the poor, as the psalm says. His left hand did not know what his right hand was doing. I think that's suitable for us on today's Lenten journey because our scripture readings today are about choices, especially our choice of good or ill. And each of us, whatever our status or station in life, we are given choices every day. Let's pray today that we, like St Casimir, may always choose the path of righteousness, of kindness, of charity. As we prepare to celebrate these mysteries today, we first call to mind our sins and ask for the grace of God's forgiveness. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, to serve you is to reign. Grant that with the help of St. Casimir's intercession, we may constantly serve you in holiness and justice. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The Lord says this, a curse on the man who puts his trust in man, who relies on things of flesh, whose heart turns from the Lord. He is like dry scrub in the wastelands. If good comes, he has no eyes for it. He settles in the parched places of the wilderness, a salt land uninhabited. A blessing on the man who puts his trust in the Lord, with the Lord for his hope, he is like a tree by the waterside that thrusts its roots to the stream. When the heat comes, it feels no alarm. Its foliage stays green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never ceases to bear fruit. The heart is more devious than any other thing, perverse too. Who can pierce its secrets? I, the Lord, search the heart. I probe the loins 
to give each man what his conduct and actions deserve. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor lingers in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of scorners, but whose delight is the law of the Lord, and who ponders his law day and night. Happy the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. He is like a tree that is planted beside the flowing waters, that yields its fruit in due season, and whose leaves shall never fade, and all that he does shall prosper. Happy the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. Not so are the wicked, not so, for they, like winnowed chaff, shall be driven away by the wind. For the Lord guards the way of the just, but the way of the wicked leads to doom. Happy the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, glory to you, Christ. You are the word of God. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. Praise to you, Lord, glory to you, Christ. You are the word of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who used to dress in purple and fine linen and feast magnificently every day. And at his gate there lay a poor man called Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to fill himself with the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even came and licked his sores. Now the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In his torment in Hades, he looked up and saw Abraham a long way off with Lazarus in his bosom. So he cried out, Father Abraham, pity me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. My son, Abraham replied, remember that during your life, good things came your way, just as bad things came the way of Lazarus. Now he is being comforted here while you are in agony. But that is not all. Between us and you, a great gulf has been fixed to stop anyone, if he wanted to, crossing from our side to yours and to stop any crossing from your side to ours. The rich man replied, Father, I beg you then to send Lazarus to my father's house, since I have five brothers, to give them warning so that they do not come to this place of torment too. They have Moses and the prophets, said Abraham. Let them listen to them. Ah, no, Father Abraham, said the rich man, but if someone comes to them from the dead, they will repent. Then Abraham said to him, If they will not listen, either to Moses or to the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I said that our scripture readings today were about choices. And that's very clear both in the first reading and the psalm, both of which are connected. They give us two alternatives. Jeremiah talks about the man who puts his trust in human or earthly things versus the man who puts his trust in God. And then in the psalm, Psalm 1, we actually hear the same thing. Happy is the man whose delight is the law of the Lord, but not so are the wicked. They shall be blown away by the wind. So in a sense, they present us with this very clear choice between doing good or doing evil, being a good person or being a wicked person. That, however, as is always the case, is deepened by Jesus in the story he tells in the Gospel, that famous story of Dives and Lazarus, the rich man 
and Lazarus, so popular in the Middle Ages. There are so many paintings and artworks of it. There are even songs and ballads that tell that story. But the story of Dives and Lazarus, in a sense, it puts that choice in a slightly different vein. It's not the obvious choice between doing good or doing evil. In a sense, the point of that story is the choice between doing good or doing nothing. Dives' sin, the rich man's sin, is not that he actively did anything evil, but he chose not to do good when it was lying at his very gate. So easy for him to offer something to help the poor man in his need, and yet he chose not to do it. He failed to do it. This obviously is given to us as part of our Lenten journey when we're thinking about how we live, about the sort of people that we are. I remember saying a few days ago that most of us probably wouldn't label ourselves as evil or wicked people. So we're certainly not choosing a path of wickedness or evil. But what we have to remember with this gospel story is, are we choosing a path of not doing the good we can do? So it's a sin of omission rather than a sin of commission. Jesus tells us very clearly that this is just as wrong as actively seeking out evil or wickedness. So we've got to think about our own lives. Are we people who walk through life with our eyes open to the opportunities to help others, especially those in need, especially the poor, especially those who suffer or those who are sick? Or do we turn our eyes away from them? Do we choose not to do the good that we can do? Let's pray today that St Casimir and so many other saints may help us with this. He was a perfect example of someone who from his position of power, authority, of wealth, could have quite easily chosen not to do the good he did. And yet Casimir chose a life of prayer, a life of penance, a life of charity and kindness. May he intercede for us and may his example help us to choose good every moment of every day. So we think of the prayers that we bring to the Lord for our Mass today. And having heard those scripture readings, let's pray for ourselves and all members of the Church on our Lenten journey, that we may use this sacred time to consider our lives and the choices that we make day by day, especially that we may always choose to do the good we can each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And on this commemoration of St Casimir, let us pray for people in positions of authority and power and wealth throughout our world, that there may be a spirit of eyes open to the needs of the less fortunate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a moment in silence, let each of us think of our own prayers and our intentions for this Mass. We ask for the help of Mary's prayers as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Most loving Father, who give us the example of the saints, so that we may choose the path of righteousness, hear the prayers your people offer to you this day, and in your love and mercy, grant us all we need to journey closer to you. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the present oblation, O Lord, which we offer in commemoration of St. Casimir, bestow on your faithful, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us to imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. At et Let us pray. May the sacraments we have received, O Lord, in commemoration of St. Casimir, sanctify our minds and hearts, so that we may merit to be made sharers in the divine nature. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads for the blessing. Abide with your servants, O Lord, who implore the help of your grace, that they may receive from you the support 
and guidance of your protection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ave Regina Celorum, Ave Domina Angelorum, Salve Radix, Salve Porta, Ex qua mundo lux est orta, Gaude Virgo Gloriosa, Super omnes speciosa, vale o valde decora, et pro nobis Christum exora.